Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. I asked ChatGPT to draw a picture of what global warming is going to do to the Earth. And ChatGPT showed that Earth is going to change from a Garden of Eden to complete devastation. Then I got more specific and said, draw a picture of what global warming is going to do to Earth when CO2 doubles. ChatGPT responded by showing that when CO2 levels double, Earth is going to experience total devastation. So then I asked ChatGPT to draw a picture of what Earth looked like the last time carbon dioxide levels were double their present values. This time it showed Earth as being a verdant paradise. The difference is that this picture was drawn from historical evidence and this one was drawn from nonsensical computer models. Then I asked ChatGPT to draw a picture of the Carboniferous era when CO2 levels were much higher. Once again, ChatGPT showed that very high CO2 levels were beneficial to life. ChatGPT is providing incoherent answers because that is what it's been trained to do. This sort of doublespeak is very similar behavior to many humans. Someone on Twitter yesterday posted, Times of high carbon dioxide, and especially times when carbon dioxide levels rapidly rose, coincided with the mass extinctions. He wants people to believe that these mass extinctions were the result of higher levels of carbon dioxide. But there's a serious problem with his diagram. Note that at 540 million years ago, when carbon dioxide levels peaked, there's no extinction. In fact, that peak coincided with the greatest expansion of life on Earth. Corals and shellfish appeared in the ocean at the time when carbon dioxide levels were at their peak. This peak, the Cambrian Explosion, completely wrecks the story that life is incompatible with high levels of CO2. Albert Einstein said, No amount of experimentation can ever prove me right. A single experiment can prove me wrong. And the Cambrian Explosion is the experiment which wrecks his theory. David wants people to believe that life is incompatible with rapid increases in carbon dioxide. But I'm pretty sure that if you move a potted plant from 400 parts per million outside to inside your house at 2,000 parts per million, the plant will do just fine. There's no scientific evidence to support the idea that a rapid increase in carbon dioxide is harmful. A more plausible explanation for this sort of behavior would be something like, asteroid hits Earth, causes massive forest fires, kills lots of animals, and returns a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. In other words, he's getting cause and effect conflated. This is similar to the mistake Al Gore made when he conflated cause and effect in the Antarctic ice cores. The ice cores didn't show that carbon dioxide drove temperature. What they showed is that temperature drove carbon dioxide. I'm going to finish this video up with some more AI devil speak. I asked ChatGPT, is CO2 visible? It brought back, carbon dioxide is not visible to the human eye. It's a colorless and odorless gas under normal atmospheric conditions. This invisibility is one of the reasons why CO2 and its impacts on the environment can be challenging to perceive. It is indeed difficult to perceive things which are invisible and imaginary. So I asked ChatGPT to draw a picture of a power plant showing CO2 coming out of the smokestack. This time ChatGPT turned carbon dioxide into an opaque, dirty looking gas. AI is not intelligent. It's simply parroting back what it's taught to do. The better the training, the better the answers. The city clerk of Cheyenne, Wyoming, where I live, says she wants an AI candidate on the city mayoral ballot. If the mayor was an AI program, that would turn the keys of the city over to some nameless, faceless trainer, possibly in Silicon Valley or Mumbai. What could possibly go wrong with that? I use artificial intelligence constantly for my work. It's extremely good as a programming aid. 
but the quality of its response to a particular topic is only as good as its training. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on climate madness for 16 years. You can visit him on the web at realclimatescience.com.